Welcome all. In this video, I'm going to be focusing on why I changed my mind on Pokemon Sword and Shield by giving it a second shot. Being my first video on this channel, I'm sure the quality is not the best, but I'm going to be putting my uh, best foot forward. And if you like what you see, definitely subscribe. And let's get into the video. I am not a hardcore Pokemon fan. However, I have played the vast majority of the titles ever since Diamond and Pearl came out, which was my introduction to the series. And with that kind of perspective, I have a pretty casual approach to the games. Um, so just to give that background information so you have some context to where I'm coming from. I picked up a copy of Pokemon Sword about two months or so after the games were launched. Going into my initial impressions, I was disappointed. I think the biggest thing that was a disappointment to me was definitely the graphics. The graphics were are pretty bad. I mean, they're still bad to this day, but I had a lot higher expectations going into the game, you know, expecting the Pokemon company to be able to fully utilize the power of the Switch, and they just didn't. I mean, the game looks like a PlayStation 2 game. And that's just my honest opinion. In contrast to my expectations, along with many of the other fans' expectations, it was just a big disappointment. And, you know, graphics aren't everything, but they're one of the first things that you see in the presentation of the game. That leads me into the story. Somewhat of a controversial opinion, I actually don't care for most Pokemon stories. I never find them that particularly interesting. I find the lore of the Pokemon games interesting, but I don't actually find the stories to be that compelling. And this game is no exception. It's, if anything, the worst story. I think, yeah, it's cool to have, you know, a level 50 Gyarados just chilling around at the very beginning of the game. But once you look past that, it's not that fun because everything looks bad, there's nothing to do in the wild area. And so because of all those reasons, I decided to drop the game. Now fast forward about a year later and one of my friends actually started getting into Pokemon. He had never played any of the games at all. So he had no, you know, no context to how the games were in comparison to other games. And he was telling me how much he enjoyed playing them. I then decided to maybe I'll, I'll, I'll give, you know, Sword here another try and we'll, we'll see how it is. I'll try to get through the beginning because I know that that's the part I hate the most anyways. So maybe the game will pick up a little bit once we get past that. I just picked up where I left off from when I put the game down uh, about a year before. And so I had just beaten the first gym leader and then that's kind of when the game started to pick up for me. Really where the game started to shine is in the Pokemon. I I just got hooked with the fundamentals, you know, I was really starting to enjoy finding new ones, you know, the thrill of, of finding all these Pokemon I hadn't catch before, and then leveling them up. I mean, that's really what brings me back to these games at the end of the day, is I get addicted to catching these little monsters, you know, making them fight till they get stronger and stronger, evolving them until they're some sort of monster beast. This is the first Pokemon game I've ever played where I finished the story with a team of entirely new Pokemon. Every single Pokemon on my team was new to this generation, and that just is a testament to how strong these Pokemon are in design, at least to me. Now, everyone has their own taste, but I really enjoyed the vast majority of these Pokemon. I enjoyed the different forms as well. I think that was, a, you know, a good good idea that was carried over from last generation having such strong designs in these pokemon and actually having a large pool of them accessible which is the key word there is really what got me hooked again kind of takes me into the controversy of dexit now i know a lot of people were not happy about the cut of several of their favorite pokemon which i understand for me, it didn't really affect my playthrough because I never carry any over. I always start from scratch based off of that particular game. Um, and I, you know, carrying Pokemon over can be a tedious, you know, frustrating task if you don't have the right hardware and you don't have the right friends available to help you, right? So, I wasn't really affected by that. And to kind of 
carry that forward if anything I actually enjoyed the way that Pokemon were presented in this game better although most games before had access to all the Pokemon through one means or another there was really only about you know 150 to 400 um, accessible in the game alone itself so even though there isn't every Pokemon's data in the game I personally enjoyed that there was a lot more to actually catch in the wild and then if you include the DLC you get you have access to over 600 Pokemon which is a lot closer to the actual total amount in all the games for me I've actually had more fun and that's one of the reasons why I've been able to get back into the game despite my criticisms I think one thing that serves this game well is the emphasis on the gyms because although the story sucks which you know it just is what it is they at least were smart enough to realize that we're gonna put all of our resources in the gyms these are the best gyms of any Pokemon game I mean the challenges aren't necessarily always hard but there are some interesting ones in there, there there's also a couple stinkers too overall the way that the gyms present themselves they really make you feel like you're in a gym battle you know some of the games before because of you know partially because of hardware restraints you just kinda had to imagine but this game in particular really does make you feel like you're challenging in front of a stadium of people who are you know screaming your name and it gives you this little sense of thrill this is one of the areas where I think the game really shines and I really enjoyed about it because again for me I don't really play for the story and so I've always been more interested in the gym battles as well as you know catching the Pokemon I still do have some criticisms of the game after playing over hundred and twenty hours the graphics still suck and when I say the graphics I obviously mean the textures I mean the draw distance I mean you know the models are okay they don't look bad the animations in this game are inconsistent and unpolished some of the animations make me think yeah that looks like Pokemon on the switch now other animations look like that looks like Pokemon on the Game Boy and you know that just it just doesn't work I feel like you know if the game was given another year to work on animations alone it could have been a lot more polished an area where I can't defend this game is definitely the route design in comparison to some of the older games um, the routes have just gotten lazy and easy uh, aesthetically speaking they look good you know it's a good they're good looking routes but once you start to explore it all you realize there's nothing to explore and that the routes are just literally a point A to point B you know little detour this is one of the smallest and shortest post games of any Pokemon I've ever played and so it doesn't really give you a whole lot of motivation to keep playing once you've caught your you know once you've beaten the gym challenge and caught your legendary this lack of post game is remedied by the expansion pass however then that takes me into the controversy of how much you're paying for this quote unquote whole experience the most straightforward way to break it down is that the game itself is sixty dollars now that it's considered a, a home console game compared to forty dollars before on portable consoles and so you have that twenty dollar addition plus now you're paying thirty dollars more for this expansion pass so that brings brings your total to about ninety dollars for a complete experience compared to forty dollars before for just the base game one could argue that this isn't that much of a price hike in comparison to you know previous games where you'd spend forty dollars for the base game and then you'd have to spend an additional forty dollars for the third definitive edition that has a lot of these extra features now this is kind of a generation to generation thing so it doesn't always apply to every game but there is an argument there so it all depends on how you look at it for me ninety dollars later I do feel like altogether this has some of the best post game content out of all the games but that's only because I'm including you know both both the expansion passes together along with the base game 
And then as we mentioned, that's a $90 experience. So it kind of goes both ways. One area where this game really shines is the music. Now, one area in the audio where this game doesn't shine, at least for me, is definitely the sound effects. I have played a huge chunk of the Pokemon games, and I can say that I'm starting to get tired of hearing the same old sound effects over and over and over. A lot of the sound effects are really a jarring and abrupt, and they kind of take you out of the experience, and for how many random items you're finding on the ground, it's really obnoxious. Now to summarize where I currently stand on these games. I had a lot of fun once I gave them a try. You know, the core Pokemon mechanics are there and there is a lot of good new Pokemon to choose from. And when you take into consideration the DLC, you have the majority of the library to choose. There is still problems with the game. You know, the graphics still suck. Now that, you can easily get past that, but there's still a lot of other issues like the animations, the routes, and the story. The story is just not good. So overall, I have mixed feelings about the game. I enjoyed my time with the game. It was some of the most fun I've had, but that doesn't change the fact that there's a lot of concerning issues. And I hope Game Freak fixes these with their next installment in the franchise. I'm going to be mildly optimistic. And I want to thank everyone for watching this video. And feel free to leave a comment in the comment section. And uh, I'll see you next time.